Leave applause for Pastor Mike. You know, it's bad when, when the speaker has got to beg for applause. Before I, uh, before I get to the PowerPoint and what I want to share with you tonight, um, just, just let me real quickly talk about Sunday night at LCBC. Because the way, the way that service ended was, was incredible. Uh, you know, that, that Pastor David was, was asking if people wanted to make a commitment to, to be a follower of, of God, and to be a follower of Christ, and to commit yourself to, to following Him one day at a time. And we had, man, we had, we had students all across that sanctuary standing up. Now, I don't know whether any of you were the people standing up. Hopefully you were. I mean, that'd be really cool if you guys were people that were standing up saying, yeah, I want to make that kind of commitment. Uh, but, but whether or not it was you, I don't know how sincere everybody was that was standing up. Part of me is wondering, man, there were hundreds of kids that stood up. Was every one of those students serious about wanting to follow, follow the Lord? I, I hope so. But whether or not somebody was serious about it, will be uh, determined by what they do since Sunday. In other words, just standing up to say, I wanna, I wanna commit myself to following Christ, isn't gonna get anything done if you don't follow up that commitment by, by doing something with it. You know, you've gotta commit yourself to doing those things that are gonna help you carry out that commitment. Part of that is coming to something on Wednesday nights. What we do here will help you uh, follow through with that commitment. You know, sitting up, paying attention in chapel and actually engaging with the fantastic speaker on Sunday morning. Right, Dylan? That's going to help you, uh, you know, honor and carry out that commitment. Spending time in the scripture, which you were encouraged to do at something last week. We encouraged you to spend some time in the scripture this past week. How many of you did that? A bunch of hands. That's cool. That's good. The point is, just standing up in a church service saying, I'm going to commit myself to following Christ isn't going to get done. you got to follow through and do those things which are going to help you to, uh, to honor that commitment. Uh, I'm glad you guys are here tonight. We had, I think, Mr. almost 65 students last week. And if I counted right on that sheet, two kids walked in late. We've got 68 students here tonight, which is really cool. Uh, thank you for coming. Make sure you talk to some more people this next week. Let's try to get more people out next Wednesday, okay? Next Wednesday, I'm going to tell you now. I've got a very good friend of mine who's going to be here to speak. He's going to pretty much tell you his, his story, tell you his life. And I'm going to tell you, you're going to pay attention to him. You know why you're going to pay attention to him? Why, Robert? He's huge. He's like... 6'3", 500 pound. If, yeah, he's my little brother. That's right. Okay? If you don't pay attention to him, he's squashed like a buck. I'll tell you that right now. Okay? Last week, what did we talk about? Something about... Listen, here's an idea. When the speaker asks a question, and he puts the answer on the, on the wall, you should respond. Okay, what did we talk about last week? Rules, that's right. Which all of you think that you are an expert on because we have so many of them uh, around you, okay? Um, we had this little quiz, this little trivia question last week. If you weren't here, I, I asked this trivia question. How many rules and commands are there in the Bible? A lot of people thought the answer was number one, there are ten. Because everybody knows about the the infamous Ten Commandments. What do you think? Keely? No? No? Keely, how, how about number two? 613. There are 613 laws or commandments in the, in the Jewish Torah. Okay? Some people thought the answer was number three. 999. That's a pretty cool number, isn't it? You know that's... The upside number of yeah, you got that right. Why, James? Why are you so quick to know the devil's number? Um, yeah, never mind. Okay, uh, number four, two thousand plus commands in the Bible. Okay, those of you that were here last week, the right answer is there are over two thousand commands in the Bible. Just give me a name.
Okay. Why are you back there snorting? Did you guys hear that? I'm up here trying to talk and hear this. <laughs> yeah, that's really distracting, Kayla. That was really very rude. Okay. We tried to make the point last week that yes, there are an awful lot of rules slash laws slash commandments in the Bible. But the Bible is not a rule book. The Bible is actually God's revelation of himself and his story to all of mankind. And, and the word revelation means what? His revealing of himself and his story to mankind, to us. It's not a rule book, but rather it's a, it's a love story. And that led to this question. If the Bible is really a love story, which is what I tried to, to, to present to you last Wednesday night, if it's a love story from God to us, then why are there so many rules in the Bible? And we're going to try to answer that question tonight, okay? Watch this video and see if it might not give you a hint as to why there are rules in the Bible. Ready? Hello, I'm Roger Patton. And if you're like me, you're tired of being told no. Everywhere you look, there are signs telling you what you can and can't do. Don't park here. Don't go there. Stop. Your company has rules. Your apartment lease has rules. Some people even say God has rules. You know what I say? I'm tired of your rules. Anybody agree? I created this show to show you that you don't have to live by those rules. You, you can make your own rules. And, and there's no reason to let God or, or anybody else tell you what you can do. Oh, 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 stop it. The sign says don't walk in. I, I, don't, I don't care what the sign says. I make my own rules. Go! Oh. Oh. No, he didn't get shot. James. James just little, did a little quick math in his head and said, he is not 10 years old. No, James, that was 20 years. Thank you very much. Listen, if the Bible really is a love story from God to us, then why are there so many rules in the Bible, which we all know are there? If it's really a love story, why is it filled with rules? The answer might surprise you. And the answer is reflected actually in, in the video. It's a stupid video, Roger Hacker getting hit by a car, not shot, okay? The answer is this. You knew it. The answer is to protect us. Listen, again, love to have fun with you guys. I love to joke, love to laugh. Love to bust on you. Love for you guys to bust on me. It's all in fun. But I'm as serious as I can be right now. The Bible really is a book from a God who loves us. And that book was written to us and for us. And the rules that are contained in it, which we don't like because we think they restrict us. We think those rules are preventing us from having fun and really enjoying life. Really, those rules are there to protect us, to keep us safe, and, and to actually give us a better life than we would have otherwise. Let me, let me show you a couple of scriptures to kind of make this point. Proverbs chapter 8. Now, children, listen to me. I'm not, I'm not calling you children. Don't be offended at the, at the language in, in the Bible here. This is God to, to us as people. Now, children, listen to me. If, one of the most powerful words in, in, in the English language, if you follow my ways, you will live a good life and you'll be happy too. Listen to my teaching and be wise. Don't ignore what I say. Whoever waits at my door and listens for me will be blessed. 
Those who find me find life, and the Lord will reward them. But those who do not find me put their lives in danger. Whoever hates me loves death. If you follow God's ways, those rules, those laws, those commandments in the Bible, if you do that, you'll live a good life and you'll be happy. First Kings chapter 3. God is speaking to a young man by the name of Solomon. Solomon becomes king of a, of a powerful nation. He's just a young guy. He doesn't have a clue how to lead. All right? And, and God speaks to him and says, If you walk in my ways, and if you obey my statutes and commands as David your father did, I'll give you a long life. Again, the, the word if is italicized and underlined to, to, to emphasize it. You can know it. You can go to chapel. You can come to something. You can read your Bible. You can go to LCBC. You can be taught what the Bible says. But if you don't do it, if you don't put it in practice, if you don't obey it, it's not going to benefit you. But if you do, God said to Solomon, you're going to live a long life. How about Proverbs 2? My, my child, if you accept my words and store up my commands within you, turning your ear to wisdom and applying your heart to understanding, if you call out for insight, cry aloud for understanding, and if you look for it as for silver and search for it as for hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom, and from His mouth come knowledge and understanding. It all comes back to not what you know about the Bible. It's what you do with what you know about the Bible. It's what you put into practice. It's applying it. Okay? Let me give you one more. This will be the, the, the last one. John chapter 10. Jesus himself that makes this statement. The thief, who's really the devil, the thief's purpose is to steal, kill, and destroy. The devil is God's enemy. plan to keep you from that plan and purpose of God. He has a plan to keep you from experiencing all that God wants you to experience. The thief, his purpose is to steal, kill, and destroy. But my purpose, Jesus says, is to give life and to give it in its fullest, which is what we call, what God calls, what the Bible calls, the good life. If you look at these laws, rules, commandments, you can call what you want in the Bible, if you look at them as restrictive, if you look at them as God's way of trying to, to keep us from fun, if you look at them as God's way of, of really trying to limit our life, then you won't want to do what they say. If you look at the, the laws, the commandments, the statutes in the Bible as God's way of helping to lead us to the good life, if you look at them as coming from a loving God who really knows what's best for us and cares about protecting us from harm, then all of a sudden when we choose to put into practice, we experience in life what God wants us to experience. Now, let me give you one example, okay? Just one example of how this works. Now remember, we said last week, there are over 2,000 commands in the Bible. Every command in the Bible I believe it is designed by God to protect us from something. Here's one example. You ready? The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 4, I don't know why that crunched that up the way it did. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 3, 4, and 5. Here's what it says. God's will, His desire, that's what God's will is, for you is to be holy. So stay away from all sexual sin. Then each of you will control his or own body and live a life of holiness and honor, not in lustful passion like those who do not know God in his ways. Now, you could look at this in, in a couple of different ways. Number one, you could say, you see, having sex is fun. Did somebody just say amen and throw themselves under the bus? Are you kidding me? The snorting one back there? Somebody's pointing at you, okay? Listen. Again, if you look at 
this commandment specifically as God trying to keep you from something fun. If you look at this as, as God not wanting you to experience the good life, which you define as a, maybe a sexual experience, you would be inclined to say, I'm going to follow that. I'm going to do what I want. I will enjoy that, so I'm going to do it. But God says, if, if you believe that I love you, and if you believe that all the laws in the Bible, this one in particular, is here to protect you and to keep you from, from harm, then you would say, okay, I need, to, I need to stay away from sexual sin because God's trying to protect me from something. What might that be? Well, it could be an unwanted pregnancy, ladies. You know, what one of the 55 million rules of Mill Hershey School are, don't you? A woman, a young lady, cannot be pregnant and remain a student in the nursery school. This is God's way of protecting you. Another possible consequence of ignoring this instruction from God could be, won't always be, but could be sexually transmitted disease. And you and I both know we both know that that's not just something that happens to the really, really bad people. It's God's way of protecting us. And what if you are, what if you are one of the lucky ones who violates this commandment from God, this, this, this way of protecting us? You say, oh, forget what God thinks. I'm going to do this anyway, you know, because I just don't agree that this is God's way of protecting me. You think it's God's way of keeping you from some fun, so you go ahead and violate this commandment, and you don't get pregnant, and you don't get caught, and the cameras at Mill Hershey School don't get you on film. Well, you think that's funny, do you? And you don't. Get a sexy trace of disease. You're thinking, well, Pastor, I got away with it. What harm was there in that? And then five years from now, ten years from now, you get married. All of a sudden, you're now with a man or a woman, and you are not able to give them what they might want, which is your human sexuality for the very first time. All of a sudden, even though you never really got caught, you were protected from this wonderful experience that God wants to give you. Because you didn't choose to look at this commandment, like all of them, as God's way for trying to protect us. It really comes down to whether or not you and I can believe that God really does love us and that God really does want to protect us from harm. And keep in mind, every commandment is designed to protect us from something. Yesterday, actually, no, let me, let me back up. Sunday was my son's 21st birthday. And uh, because of the LCBC thing on Sunday night and, 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 it, and some of my other children's work schedules, we couldn't all get together, so we chose to, to go out last night for dinner for my son's 21st birthday. Now take a wild guess as to what my son wanted to do on his 21st birthday. Huh? Typical. Drink. Lots of water. That's right, Dylan. Drink. Yeah. yeah. My son wanted to experience something he's never experienced before. He wanted to, to have a beer. Dad, what do you think about that? I said, son, do you really need to ask me? He said, nah, I know what you think. And I'm going to drink anyway. And you know what? He's 21. And he paid for his own alcohol. And he got sick. And I was deep down inside. Loving my son, saying, yes, thank you, God. Every commandment in the Bible 
is designed to protect us from some harm. What God wants for us, the result of these commands in the Bible, if you put them into practice, if you choose to follow them, if you choose to believe they come from a loving God who loves us more than anyone on earth ever will, and if you choose to believe that God knows what's best for us and He really wants to protect us from harm, the result of putting them into practice is God's blessing, it's ultimately happiness, it's health, it's long life, it's peace of mind, it's what the Bible calls the good life. The kind of life that God wants to give us. But you won't experience it doing what you want to do. You won't experience the kind of life that God wants you to have by choosing to ignore God's laws and God's ways and God's commands. It's putting them into practice and believing that they're for our good, that we experience the kind of life that we all want to live. And oh, by the way, ultimately, there's eternal life. Because we're choosing to follow as we were challenged to do Sunday night, choosing to, to commit ourselves to, to, to believing and following in the one who loves us more than anybody else in the world. That's the result. I don't need to ask you whether or not you want to experience a good life. I know you do. Everybody does. The question is, do you believe that God's plan for that good life can be found in following His ways? If not, try it on your own. Go find it on your own. But I'm telling you, history will tell you there's a bazillion examples that have gone before you. You're going to hear from one next Wednesday of someone who tried to find the good life their way because they know better than God what's good. And it got them into trouble. This is the result of living life God's way. What happens when a person chooses not to follow God and chooses not to follow God's ways? Well, come back next week and you'll hear from a guy Robert, you are a big man. You know that? Your brain can't be that small. I'm telling you. Okay? You're a big man. Put that muscle to work. Right there it is. You want me to go back? Robert. Robert. Come here, stand up. Stand up. Come on, everybody give Robert a hand. Robert, no, 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 don't, don't look there. You're going to scare people, all right? Look up here. Read that. <laughs> What's the question again? What happens when a person chooses not to follow God in his ways? Come back next week. You're going to hear from a guy who chose to do it his way. Screwed up his life big time. Finally came to the conclusion that maybe God was right. Maybe God does know better than he does about what the good life is all about. Chose to follow God, put God's ways into practice. His life is a little different. Come back next week and find out a little bit more. God bless you. Now what? Now what? Listen, we're going to do something a little bit different. This is risky. You can handle it. Here's what I'm going to ask you to do. Find another person, two people, three people that you're comfortable talking with. Okay? You, you okay, Xavier? You got a Charlie horse? Well, you disrupt me when I'm talking again. I'm going to sell more than a Charlie horse. Let me tell you that. Okay? Find somebody you're comfortable sharing with. And share with. Now, listen, don't move yet, Christian. <laughs> share with each other that you're comfortable sharing with God's commandments that maybe you struggle with a bit. Talk amongst your little group, two, three, four people, how that commandment actually protects you or could protect you, and then pray for each other. 